Hello and welcome to this video. We're going to be interviewing Juna from Detour Shirts, who is ridiculously successful with Print On Demand, and he's got a really big Instagram channel. So without further ado, without wasting any more time, let's just get right into it. All right. So Juna, mm -hmm. tell us a bit about you. Who are you? What's your story? Um, yeah, my name's Juna. I'm a graphic designer, t-shirt designer. I've been designing for a long time. Um, I got a degree in commercial art. I started there. I went into the graphic design business. Um, I love t-shirts ever since I was young. So um, when print on demand came about, I jumped on it. I, I got on pretty early. I, I started print on demand with Cafe Press in 2005. Wow, that's a long time ago. <laughs> if you remember. Yeah, <clears throat> that was a long time ago. Then I moved to Zazzle and so on. And I, I got a kind of big following on there in the beginning. And I got a lot of networking with friends and things. And so when Merch by Amazon came along, um, one of my old um, colleagues from Cafe Press emailed me and said, you got to try this um, Merch by Amazon thing. It's blowing up. So I got on there and sure enough, uh, I took, took to it really well. Um, Merch by Amazon is, is now my biggest um, print on demand. Um, really? Other, I guess, yeah. yeah so is this, far, is this your far. main job and it has been since 2005? No, I still have a nine to five job. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. All right, fine. Yeah. So what do you do in nine to five then? So I'm a UX designer. I trans, uh, um, I went from graphic designer to UX designer. Um, that's cool. So my wife, my wife wants to be a UX designer. Oh yeah. It's fun. It's great. I love that's it. Really cool. Yeah. Which makes it really hard to, you know, I, I, I love doing that job with the nine to five job as well as, so I, I, I'm trying to do both as much as I can, but if, you know, if t-shirts take off, then see what happens but well, it's always nice to have a a steady income just as a, sure. a safety net because you know some sales some some months you get a lot of sales some months you don't get sales but the fact that you've got that salary um yeah. is really good i mean whenever anyone asks me should i quit my nine to five you know start amazon or start this start that yeah. i'm just like don't quit anything until you have a steady flow from your yeah. hustle for um, sure there's so many so many gurus out there are just like yeah quit your nine to five get go straight into it like you know, I was like, no, 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 no. It's risky. No, no, it's risky for sure. <laughs> so yeah. risky. Um, okay, fine. Well, I mean, that's really cool. Fine. So that leads right on to, okay. you've used all these different platforms. What would you say uh -huh. your favorite platform is? So my favorite right now is Merch by Amazon, just because it, I think it works for me. It may not work for everybody, but the style mm -hmm. that I have and what I've learned from Cafe Press and all of that, it, it just works really well for me. Uh, um, I thought I you were that. going to say that. I thought you were going to say yeah. that, which is why in the questions that you've seen, there are some, some questions have the word Redbubble in them because yeah. I was originally going to be like, what's your favorite platform? And then go off from that. But yeah. I also really want to talk about Redbubble. Yeah, let's do it. I, I am on Redbubble. Oh, um, okay. So we'll talk I, about both. We'll talk yeah, about both yeah. because I feel like for a lot of my viewers, I think all of them are on Redbubble. Some of them struggle to get onto Merch by Amazon just because of the mm -hmm. um, yeah, right. approval process. Exactly. Um, but I think, I think Redbubble is a lot more known just for you know majority yeah. of people amazon's yeah. very new um, but no yeah. i definitely want to definitely want to you know go into both of them yeah redbubble sure. has their strengths of course uh, like you said you don't have to wait you can upload right away join right away i've been yeah. doing a lot of youtube videos for for redbubble as well just because i'm i'm not like a big time seller on redbubble i'm kind of more of an average seller i would guess um right. and so i i thought it would be more relatable to people like here's what i'm doing on redbubble and Instead of showing like, look, I'm doing 2,000 sales on Merch by Amazon, try and do this, right? So um, it, I think it was more relatable for me to do Redbubble. 100%, also. yeah. I mean, that, that's one thing I like. I mean, so whenever I talk about YouTube or affiliate marketing on my, on my account, the numbers I'm giving aren't like blow your mind numbers. Mm -hmm. But to the viewer, it's like, oh, he's made 1,000 pounds. That's really relatable. I can do that too. Whereas when I watch like Graham Stephen or, or Stefan, however you say his name, and you know, he's yeah. made like a hundred grand that month from affiliate marketing. I'm just like, right. yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, all right, fine. So, okay. So in that case, what's based this video around Amazon and Redbubble and sure. for the yeah. next couple of questions. So my next question would be monthly sales or not necessarily sales, but um, volume. So with mm -hmm. Redbubble, I, I, I actually watched your September um, earnings report and oh, I can see you. you're going up I think it was like 140 units or something in September something like that yeah yeah just yeah around, so uh, that's um, really cool yeah. that's really really cool getting over 100 sales a month um, mm -hmm. I just wish the margins were better 
Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is what it is, but yeah, it, it stickers sticker sell a lot and you know, you get one to $2. Would you say sticker. that's your most, your most popular product stickers? I would say so. Yeah. I think, uh, at least last month I sold more than 50% of my income was where it was from stickers. Really? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's really good. Okay. They fine. Really so well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always say stick because stickers are such an easy thing. I mean, I'm in the process of building the sticker wall with, um, buying that's all, right. of, I did yeah, see all of my subscribers. I'm, I'm like a third way through it. I'm going to have to send you some. Yes, put your link in. I mean, send me your link and I'll get some. Okay. It's so hard to fill this sticker wall. I bought like 150, 200. <laughs> a whole wall. Yeah, I, couldn't even, I wasn't even close. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to do another, another thing. But the thing is, they're so cheap. So it's like, yeah. it's okay. I don't mind buying them in bulk. Whereas, yeah. and also I'm using them. But everyone who asked me to buy the t-shirts, like, I'm not going to wear it. So I feel like it's a bit of a waste. Yeah. Um, but okay, so with Redbubble, you're looking at what, 140 sales. What about... What about Amazon? How's that looking? So merch by Amazon is a little different. I, I probably make an average of $5,000 um, a, a month. A month? A um, month. That's huge. Depending, yeah. And, and Q4, it, it doubles. So I, I get about ten to 12000 a month. Wow. And what tier are you on? 100 tier. Okay. So 100, that mean- 100K tier, sorry. Yeah. 100,000 tier. Yeah, yeah. Does that mean you can do 100,000 designs? No. That means I can upload up to a hundred thousand designs. Yeah. So I'm at about 50,000 right now. 50,000 designs. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. So I've been doing it. Volume. It's a lot of volume. It's a lot of scaling. It's a lot of, you know, finding the right niche that you can, people will find you. So once you do something, my strategy on that is I, I upload a bunch of things. I find out what works for me and then double down on those things. Right. So right. Wow. It's just a process. Just do it over and over again. I've been on Merch by Amazon since 2017, so it took me a little while. Um, right. so, so how long would you say it took to start making, you know, four figures a month? Like Probably two not, years. not just months, Probably but also how many designs in? Uh, how many designs in? Probably about twenty thousand or so. Wow. Yeah. I wouldn't. It's even... different for everybody. It's different for everybody. Some people can make a lot more a lot quicker. My brain wouldn't let me come up with 20,000 ideas. Well, it's not 20,000 original ideas because you can scale it and also you're putting it on different products. So every product that you True. put it on, Amazon comps it as True. one. So even though you're, you did one design, you put it on all products, all marketplaces, you know, that's, you know. 30. That's amazing. So, I mean, 50,000 designs. And how many designs do you reckon you have on Redbubble? Yeah, I only have about 800 designs on Redbubble. I'm, I'm trying to get to 900 this month and maybe a thousand by the end of the year, but why don't you pay someone? Why don't you pay someone to transfer all of your Amazon designs onto Redbubble? I don't know. I mean, (laughs) 50,000 designs on Redbubble sounds like a pretty, a pretty good amount of designs. Yeah, I probably could. I probably could. I don't know. I just, I've, I've been doing it all myself this whole time and I don't know if I'm scared or I just, when I say employ someone, I just mean, yeah. you know, Upwork, Fiverr, a simple, yeah, yeah. you know, 20 hour job. Think of it, even right. if it costs you five grand to move all of your designs over, if that meant you were going to start making five grand a month from Redbubble as well. That makes huge. a lot of sense. You know? it's, a, yeah. it's, it's a big investment, but like you've got the designs there. It's not like the hard part, the hard part about uploading is coming up with the idea and designing. You've got the designs. Yeah. That's true. So, I got them all. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense just to to spread yourself on as many platforms as possible. It does make a lot of sense. I don't know why I'm. Again, I think I'm just so focused on merch by Amazon that I. I hear that. It, there's I hear a that. lot to do with the nine to five and everything. So yeah. Okay. But you make a good point. I might have to do that before the end of the year. <laughs> All right, fine. So that so this actually leads us on to nicely onto um we 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 touched on this you know getting your first sales and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So for Redbubble because Redbubble was more mm-hmm. recent for you than Amazon. Right. How, after uploading a design, how many months do you think it took you, or even weeks before you, you know, got your, just, just your first sale? Yeah, good point. Um, I think it takes about three weeks and on average to actually get a sale. Some, some okay. sales come earlier, some don't. When I was on Cafe Press, when I first started, I got a sale like within a week. Okay, um, wow, and That's brilliant. And I'm doing this um, challenge on, on, one, on my channel on YouTube. I'm doing like this tier 10 challenge to see if I can put 
10 random designs, not random, well-researched designs on Merch by Amazon and see when I can sell it. And only about two of them sell. And one sold within a week and another one sold within two weeks. But, you know, it's it depends on the design. Some don't even sell at all. So out of 10 designs, I think, you know, maybe two or three sell and the others don't. And so That's mad. I mean, do you think that with Amazon, do you think with Amazon, the more sales you're getting, the the better like the, the better health your account has and Amazon kind of put you up yeah. in the listings. Yeah. So like you, you reckon for a new would, guy it's gonna be way way harder. Yeah, I don't know if it's weighted like that. I'm not sure what their algorithm is. I, I think and I'm guessing everybody gets a chance to be on page one on Amazon, uh right. however low that is. So Amazon can see like okay people are buying this one, let's move into page one, or people aren't buying this one, let's move into page whatever, 10, or, yeah. you know. So I think everybody gets a chance, you just have to have that hook, that nice design, that's something that people want to want to buy. So that's okay. my theory, I'm not exactly sure how it works. But okay, I mean, so do you reckon you put more weight in the quality of the design or the quantity of the designs uploaded? So what's better, you know, 10,000 incredible designs or 50,000 decent designs? I think the designs have to be good enough for somebody to want to buy it. That's the thing. It doesn't have okay. to be incredible piece of artwork. Like there is a, there is a kind of a threshold of quality, right? Quality can just be good enough to sell. I think that's, that's kind of the threshold. Like if it's any better, great. You may get a few more sales, but it just has to be good enough that somebody wants to wear it on their body and, and the audience wants to buy it. Right. So, um, of course you can go below that and then nobody wants to buy it. So you, you have to be at least good enough or better than the competition out there that people want to buy. It. That's, that's pretty oh, much. And, and you only need one person to like it to, uh -huh. you know, kind of show that it's got, it's got yeah. some potential. Not, and not everyone's going to like it because it's all personal preference. Like we would probably like right. very different t-shirts, but they could both be very good t-shirts in our own mind. Uh-huh. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. So starting with Redbubble then, and then we'll okay. go to Amazon. Sure. What three tips do you think you would you would give someone? More importantly, someone like fresh, new, maybe mm -hmm. doesn't have that many sales who are looking just to not necessarily scale up their game, but just to kickstart it in a way. Yeah, I would say number one, play to your strengths. So if you're a painter, then show off your skills in painting. If you're a photographer on Redbubble, Photographers do, photographers do really well on Redbubble. Don't go and change and be like, well, I'm a great photographer. I'm going to try and do t-shirts. I, I wouldn't do that. I would actually try and sell my photography if you're oh, a really nice. good photographer. If, okay. you're, if you're a great graphic designer, then do art. If you're like, everybody has their strengths. Um, I would say play to your strengths first to try and boost that. You could, you could you know, get a really good niche going People come to your shop and can see everything's consistent because you're, you're sticking to what you know. Um, the second thing I would say is be consistent. A lot of people are just like, I'm going to put up 20 designs and then wait three months and then see what sells. Literally. Well, actually, it's better if you put one, one every day, every day, every day, and, and then see. Because then you'll be learning what sells and, and so on instead of just waiting. And I think the last one, oh, what was I going to say? Um, just put on, I, I wrote some notes here. Oh yeah. Know the audience, of course. Yeah. Okay, so, so what does that uh, mean? Red bubble, audience? their audience is a little different than merch by Amazon. And then there's different audiences within each niche of, of red bubble too. So kind of know that audience. What do they like to buy? You can, you can kind of track that when you look on red bubble, what people like to buy. So. Okay. And I would say those, those tips kind of work for Amazon as well. They're kind of universal mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. Um, the only yeah. difference is you can't really sell paintings and photography really well on Merch Fam. Amazon, not yet, at least. Not yet. Whereas Redbubble, you can sell like big canvas prints and you can sell things like that that do really well. Okay. I, see, for me, I, so I'm a photographer and I always found it so hard selling photos just because in my mind, people don't want to pay for photos when they've got websites like Unsplash and Google. It's true. It might be harder. Yeah, I mean, you've got like, you unique. can download a picture, a, an HD picture, and then have it printed and put it on your wall, no problem. Mm -hmm. So why pay someone for it? So I don't know. I always found photos quite tough. Um, but I mean, I 
definitely agree to play playing to your strengths. I mean, if, if you're good at art, then right. actually creating t-shirts should be a lot more, a lot easier. And I would say, you know, if you're good at art, actually design the t-shirt yourself, pen and paper, rather than use clip art or place it or any of these mm-hmm. places like Canva that give you free images, yeah. actually draw out the whole thing yourself and you'll find that's yeah. going to be a much better design. Yeah. For sure, because then you'll have a consistency of your drawing. Your art will show, and you'll see everything on your shop will will have that same consistent look. And I think yeah. people will gravitate Do you think that's that important if they like have, one of your things. Like, is that important me? to have like a a shop that looks good that's, that everything's matching, or is it okay just to have random designs all over the place? I like to have it matching. Uh, I think people that do random things are just trying to figure it out, probably. They're trying okay. to figure out what works. But once you figure out what works, I, I'm kind of, I mean, I say that not to have random things, but my shop has a lot of random things in it too. So I'm, I'm guilty of that. Um, but I think if you can, if you can have a consistent look and feel, uh, I, that would be a strength. Okay. Sure. All right. So I think those are pretty good tips. Anyone listening, if you, if, if you like those tips, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you're doing any of those tips, then smash the like button. You've always got to ask them to smash the like button. Um, no, I think those are very, very good tips. All right, fine. So I think... Can I say one more thing? I, I think some people may not even be good at uh, design or photography or painting, and they still want to get into Redbubble. Maybe they're good at business. Then if, you're, if that's not your strength of design, then go and find a designer or go and find help. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I just did a video where I went up against a Fiverr designer and their design actually came out, I actually want to say better than mine. It was such a good design. The only wow. thing is, it was like a dog niche. They didn't have a picture of a dog and it was very colorful. Um, so there's a few things I would have changed, but it cost me 20, 26 pounds, right? So whatever that is in dollars. Yeah. And I had a really, really good design. And I reckon that could sell if I put it on, you know, merch by Amazon or, or anything really. Uh-huh. So... And, and that was expensive. I, would, I just went for an expensive one because I wanted to make the video a bit more interesting. But you yeah. could literally get that for so cheap. That's so, true. Like, so yeah, I agree. If you're a good business person, then pay someone to do the design. There's nothing. That's why I'm telling you to pay someone to upload for you. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm a bad uploader. I need, I need you're good at designing, but uploading to Redbubble, well, clearly <laughs> not. <laughs> right, that's right. I um, okay, it. fine. So I think, I think one, of, one of the people's biggest, like, biggest problems is knowing what to put title description tags kind of thing. Mm. Um, yeah. And I think less title and description because that's like SEO kind of stuff. But do you have any advice, any tips for tags? Because I know that's more Redbubble than it is much by Amazon. True. Um, but I mean, like what would you say about just uploading something, putting the right tags in? To yeah. Get seen? I think you need to put the right tags in. I, I think the, I think some people just want to put so many tags and think that putting a hundred tags will help them better. It's, I don't think it's about how many tags you have. I think it has to be relevant tags. So if you're, if your design is about dogs, don't put cat in the tags, right? Cause that's not going to help you. Um, and there's, there's different um, ways to find tags. I mean, you can look what other people are doing. There's some tag um, apps out there that tell you what tags are the most popular for Redbubble and for Merch by Amazon. So you can use that. But I think most importantly, you want to use the tags that are relevant to your design just so okay. that you rank for that. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of, you know, a bit of it is luck. You're getting sales, you're getting sales, you're not getting sales, you're not getting sales. But there's not like a special thing that all these people getting sales are doing differently. Right. Um, and I think a lot of people put a lot of um, emphasis on tags. Tags actually help your... Um, design gets seen but if your design is not very good it doesn't matter what tags you have on there like you can be on page one and if everybody around you has a better design and yours is a design that nobody wants those tags really didn't help you right so you you still have to have a good enough design that when people see you on page one or when people put in a tag and find your thing um, they want to buy your product so it it's both right you need the tags as well as the design that's good enough that people want to buy it yeah and i mean do you think the price is also an important factor what i've noticed i mean you don't want to be so high out there that people 
I mean, that is another reason why people buy, right? People buy um, for what they want. And if the price matches, like if your design is so much better than everybody else and people are like, like let's say branding, right? I'm yeah. going to pay a lot more for maybe a Nike or Adidas or something because I want that more than just the regular shirt. So the price There's also a quality difference there though. There's also like a, yeah. there's a quality difference um, between something like Nike and something like Redbubble. Right. Sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So, I mean, you're also kind of paying for that, but I just find that. Paying for the name, the brand, the quality, all of that. Right. But on Redbubble, everybody's the same quality. So how do, how do you, up your quality, it would have to just be the design, right? Because everything right. else is the same. Because so. I, I saw a lot of the top people for a lot of the search terms are selling for about 14, I think it was 14, 96, like 15 pounds here in the UK okay. um, yeah. compared to the people who I see not selling are selling for 22 pounds. And mm. I always tell people, I mean, Might you're making too. less, you're making less profit margin. Okay. But you're going to get a lot more sales because I personally would never spend 22 pounds on a t-shirt just because, and I've seen, I'm, I've bought the quality. So I know the quality of their t-shirts. And I just feel like spending 22 pounds on a t-shirt. That's like a very basic t-shirt. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a hard sell for sure. Yeah. It's a hard, especially when it's like three weeks delivery and all this kind of stuff. It's a really hard sell. That's why I always tell people to know, just make sure you're making a bit of money. But at the end of the day, yeah. Be fair to your customers in a way. For sure. Yeah. Um, fine. Wicked. So, I mean, I think I know the answer to this question just because right. I've seen your Instagram so much, but do you design all of your own stuff or do you I pay design all my own, except for on videos where I show how to use um, vintage sunsets or how to use, you know, merch by merch informer graphics. I kind of do that for the videos, but, um, other than that, I design everything myself. So, so you don't even use, you don't even use like Canva or any of these places to, to get the graphics? No. Wow. I, I don't, per except for the videos when I'm teaching other people how to do it. That's I, incredible. I so what programs are you using then? Illustrator, Photoshop? I'm using uh, Affinity Designer, which is a lot like Illustrator. I, I used Illustrator when I first started, um, years and years and years. And then I just switched over to Affinity Designer, just a little more affordable for me. And it does most of the same things. There are some things that I wish it's, it had, but you know, like the warp text and all of that. Yeah, um, Trader has, but Affinity Designer, for the most part, works really well for me, and I'm I'm happy with it. No subscription, so it's just that's like really 50, cool. Yeah, 50 I can't bucks. believe you design everything. That's it must take you ages, and that actually, you know, is perfect segue onto how many designs and uploads are you are you able to actually do in a week? Considering you do yeah, all yourself. so designs versus uploads, I probably do. Um, I don't know, 10 to 12 designs a week. Um, okay. But as far as uploads, like Merch by Amazon, you know, one design can be 20, 30 uploads. So I, I probably upload between 100 and 500 a week, or something like that, on, on Merch by Amazon. That's crazy. So, I mean, I know you've got your nine to five. So when you're not yeah. doing that, how long are you spending actually working print on demand business? So I, I have a schedule. I get up at 5.30 in the morning um get ready do some merch by amazon stuff do some youtube stuff um and so i start my nine to five at nine end at five um and so anytime i get after that um i try and do more designing and uploading until about 10 30 at night and then i go to sleep at 10 30 and do the same thing over and over and on saturdays if it's not a saturday where we're going out or something um i can spend a lot more time on saturdays from the morning till you know, as long as it takes me. So Saturdays are some big upload dates. Some some Saturdays when it's not a weekend where where we go out or anything. So I can do some. Oh my big, gosh, big you're like a there. proper workhorse. Five thirty to ten thirty every single day. That's insane. Yeah, I mean, well, I find it difficult just managing YouTube as well as everything else. Uh, yeah, how YouTube. The hell you're doing it? <laughs> yeah, YouTube has taken. I I just started YouTube, and so adding that in into my process took a took a little bit of work so yeah that's mad I, yeah youtube takes a while especially editing and uploading my upload speeds take forever so i have to like um upload it overnight so i just it takes like three hours to upload my videos so get i have better get better upload. internet I, I use that five thousand uh, paycheck and upgrade your internet <laughs> that's right i know my upload speed is like five ten minutes for a video really 
Yeah. For a 15 minute video. Oh, longer. I wow. can, yeah, I, I, I could upload an hour video in about 25 minutes. Oh my goodness. I need your internet. Yeah. I'm going to have to look for that. Do you guys have fiber optic in America? Is that a thing? We do. Uh, I don't know if it's in our area. I'll have to check. I think we just, yeah, I have like, I feel a, like you live in the middle of the forest or something. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wicked. Okay, fine. So just to recap that last bit. So on a daily basis, you do print on demand, right? You do YouTube, you do your right. UX job. Yep. And is there anything else you do? Um, do you do any investing, I, trading, anything like that? No, I don't do any of that. Okay. I mean, I think you've got enough on your plate, so that's fine. Um, <laughs> that's ridiculous. And then I, you, like, you obviously use family time and all that kind of stuff as well. Right, mixed right, into yeah, all of that. Yeah, that's what I, I thought you meant by do you do anything else? Yeah, I do spend time with my family. We so they see you. Then. I do eat. They see me. <laughs> yeah, we spend the weekend together, and there there are some nights like I said, like after work. Some nights we do go out and and do stuff, you know. So okay. it's not every night, but the nights that I have free, I use it to do merch by Amazon. And the that's morning awesome. that I have free, usually the mornings are really good because nobody's up at. 5.30 in the morning like I am. So I get to do a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'm really trying to do that. I'm really trying to wake up early, but I just, I find it, it so hard. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know how to get, I, I well, did it, it for like a week. Early. That's why I have to sleep at 10.30. If I stay up past 10.30, then the 5.30 thing doesn't happen, right? Ah, so. fine. So that's why I'm, I'm failing because I'm going to bed at one. <laughs> but, but yeah. Yeah, it's hard. You need that six, seven, eight hours of sleep at least. So. Okay, yeah. fine. That makes sense. So, <laughs> With the, with the print-on-demand stuff, so seeing as you do the designs, you do all the drawings, the graphics, That's how right. long would you say it takes you to, on average to design one design? It depends on the design. If I'm doing something really intricate um, where I'm drawing a character from scratch, it'd probably take me an hour. If I'm doing text designs with you know, moving text around and, and doing it more in a graphical sense, maybe, maybe you know, doing some... Yeah artwork that way but not actually drawing a character i could probably knock something out in 15 minutes 20 minutes so do you use like a pen and a tablet and stuff no i just do like old school illustrator i have my mouse really and yeah yeah pen tool yeah wow that's I, insane I, that's another thing i think i want to try do the ipad thing i just i didn't grow up that way i started with you know um mouse and right of course so, yeah just it's easier for me to do that. I think it would take a little learning curve to draw Yeah, um, and then, on a tablet. I draw on paper and then scan it in and then trace it kind of thing. So, Oh, okay. Fine. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I mean, that's what I would have yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. So that makes the most sense. Yeah. I do pencil and paper, draw, draw my ideas on, on white paper, scan it in and then trace over it in, in affinity designer with the pen tool. Right. Like that, that makes the most sense. But then in terms of um, coming up with ideas, where do you like look for niches and ideas and, because that's, I mean, that's a lot of ideas. Even though you're making one idea, 50 designs, uh -huh. like even 10, 12, 15 ideas in a week well, is a lot of ideas. Well, Amazon makes it really easy. So does Redbubble, actually. Um, you can look for trends. You can look for ideas. Just, you know, think of, think of a, a niche. So let's say cats. I want to do something with cats. Yeah. Type in cats and then look what's around there. Get some ideas and just start sketching, brainstorming. So same thing with Merch by Amazon. You can go on there and, you know, type in a niche and I want to do a t-shirt for this topic and you can search and you can see the BSRs. What's great about Merch by Amazon over anything else is you can see the BSRs and see what's exactly selling. Yeah. I mean, BSRs are a godsend. Yeah, That's amazing. That, I'm using it for our that, FBA business as well. Yeah. And uh, no other print on demand platform has that. Um, it's, it's good and bad because people jump on trends so fast and then it's saturated, but yeah, it, kill it also tells you what sells. So I don't yeah. know, it's a, kind of a two edge sword there, but. So, I mean, as someone who then, who does all their own designs, you know, has 50,000 different products, I would say not 50,000 designs, 50,000 uh -huh. products. What's your take on, you know, people stealing designs? Cause I get a lot of comments being like, I don't want to share my design. I'm scared someone's yeah. going to steal it. And these are coming from people who have, you know, 10 designs and they don't want to share one because yeah. they're going to get, I'm just like, forget people stealing your designs, upload thousands of them. And if someone steals yeah. one, you probably wouldn't even notice. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it's a shame that that's what people do. And I, I don't like that people do that, but it is, 
but it is. I mean, you can't stop people from selling, especially nowadays with the internet being so big and, and so easy to, to take something off, of, take a screenshot or whatever. So my philosophy is, unless it's on Redbubble or, or Amazon and it's directly hurting my competition, uh, I'll report those. But trying to track down every print on demand site ever on, on the internet that stole my design, that's gonna just waste my time. And so yeah. I, I don't put a lot of focus on that. And honestly, like even the big people get stolen. Like we talked about Nike and Adidas and, and things like that. They get stolen. It doesn't stop them from producing more and more stuff. It shouldn't stop us. So I agree. I, 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 I keep trying to tell them don't yeah. focus on the few negative people that are going to steal your stuff. Yeah. Just focus on, you know, keep working. And, and um, I mean, that leads us into yeah. Redbubble in particular. I, I see on Redbubble uh-huh. more than I see on Amazon, but the number of copyrighted designs yeah. is insane i mean yeah. what what is going on with that like i'm not ridiculous. exactly sure i don't know if Redbubble doesn't want to police it or don't ha- doesn't have time to police it or it cost them too much money to police it but you can see people just snagging um pictures off of movies and tv shows and making it a sticker and selling it and yeah. um yeah i i, I the was umbrella academy was stay a very- away from that but yeah, the Umbrella this... Academy was a super popular niche at yeah, one yeah, point. Yeah. And there was just stickers with all the characters' faces, the, the logos. I was just like, how is this allowed? Yeah, yeah. And you can get kicked off of Redbubble. It is possible. I've heard people um, get kicked off of Redbubble for doing that kind of stuff. So you, you're taking a chance. I mean, I think these people are trying to get a cash grab and get, you know, quick money. And and the consequence is they, they could get kicked off and lose their account forever. And then those are the people who are complaining, like, I, I got kicked off a red bubble. I can't get back on. Please help. Please help. I'm like, what did you do? It's not, it's not easy to get kicked off a red bubble uh-huh. unless you're doing all those bad things. But, and even yeah. if you are doing all those things, I mean, majority of the, the number one, like the top 10 listings uh-huh. are stolen designs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which yeah, is also so, a bit, it's a bit uh, demotivating because you kind of see all these, you put so much effort in and these other people have literally just copied something from Google and they're getting so many mm-hmm. sales from it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't try know not to worry about other people. I try to try and build up my thing, but yeah, it is. Nice, I like that. Kinda, if you are on there and, and new to the platform and you see that, you're like, well, I don't want to do this. I don't want to break the law or anything and my stuff will get buried. So it is kind of demotivating, like you said to do that. But I I think there's a lot of other people that actually do it right and make a a good living by doing it right. So there's that. Sure. No, a hundred percent. And okay. So, um, just two more questions. Yeah, for sure. Just two more. Um, this one is interesting. Do you, uh, cause I've, my, my, uh, relationship with print on demand has been very much paying for advertising. And, um, Mm. so, with Amazon and with Redbubble, do you do all the marketing organically? Do you pay? Do you run a lot of it through your Instagram page? Where is the bulk of your traffic coming from? I mean, to make $5,000 um, a month on Amazon, is the okay. traffic all organic from Amazon? I think most of it is organic from Amazon. I do use Amazon marketing or their ads. Um, PPC. But I probably, get, I probably pay between 10 and $20 a day and get, um five to ten sales a day from that so it's not a bunch uh okay just to let you know i i probably sell about a hundred a day so maybe what, 10%. sales yeah on merch by amazon right oh so five thousand dollars equates to about what three thousand sales yeah about okay. about two two to three thousand yeah okay that makes sense that's ridiculous. Um, That's a lot of sales. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's about it. It's, it's all about, like you said earlier, like the, the margins aren't that great when compared to Shopify, right? Like I'm getting $3, $4 per shirt. Yeah. Where on the, if you did it for yourself on, on Shopify, you probably get $10 markup or something like that. Yeah. But you also get, you can get a ton more sales because of the traffic that Amazon gets and so on. So it's so the same majority of your traffic is organic and then i mean most you, of it yeah do you get anything from your instagram page because that's a big page now it is a big page the problem with that page is i've made that page for um t-shirts. sellers yeah for, for um people like me who want to design and sell t-shirts online so it's really a help page for people that want to do that and most print on demand sellers 
um, like that content, but they're not going out and buying my stuff because right. maybe if I branded my stuff and say, buy this, but, uh, you know, I don't think a lot of traffic comes from that as well. Probably, probably a lot less than the ads itself on, on Amazon, honestly. So. That makes sense. I mean, I, I, when I, I wouldn't have assumed you'd be getting sales from your page just because it's just the wrong audience. It's um, the wrong audience. Yeah. If I built it again, I would probably build it for my brand instead of for Peter's shirts, but I think we'll it's see. cool because I think there's a lot more money in the business of helping yeah, than actually sure. doing print on demand. So I think eventually, I mean, with the knowledge that you have with Amazon specifically, you could mm-hmm. easily make a course on, you know, merch by Amazon or some guides or anything like that kind of stuff. And that's what you would exactly. end up using your Instagram page for. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. That's why I built it. And, and honestly, that's why I started YouTube as well because right. I thought I could do the same thing I did on Instagram, but in video form and people can follow along on what I'm doing. A lot of times when I post stuff on, on Instagram, I'm doing like screenshots for like a tutorial for affinity designer, for example. And then people ask me, wait, how did you get from step one to step two? I, <laughs> I don't understand. So like, I'll do a video for it. Let me, let me show you. So, yeah. Yeah. I, that video definitely better. I mean, you've also, I would say anything you post on YouTube, you can post on the, Instagram TV part of Instagram. True. I, yeah. I, I saw that. someone, I saw someone doing that and there's a, I forgot the name of the website, but there's a website where you can upload it and it will scale it for you to fit. Really? Yeah. Awesome. And then you can literally, and because you've got such a huge audience on Instagram, I would say that's so beneficial for you yeah. to, 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 you know, build up even more. Um, yeah. But okay, fine. Last question. All what right. would, you uh give me one piece of advice for a newbie someone who hasn't actually started their print on demand they're thinking do i want to do affiliate marketing do i want to do print on demand do i want to do amazon fba do i want to do youtube and you're Uh trying to tell them you want to do print on demand what's one piece of advice i'm gonna tell them that they want to they they want to do print on demand and i want to convince them to do print on demand is that what you're saying yeah and you want to give them a piece of advice like my piece of advice i would say is don't give up, you know, just keep posting. Right. For sure. Like a lot of people go in, they, I think the biggest piece of advice for print on demand is that it is not a get rich quick scheme. Right. Um, a lot of people see all the numbers and which is great, which motivates a lot of people. Look, this guy got $5,000 a month. Look at him. I can do that too. But remember it took me two years to get to there. I mean, I'm right. on my third year. Um, so in my first month, I made six sales on Merch by Amazon. My second month, I made 13 and so on. So it just keeps, it's not something you go into and you're going to flip something and then you got a $5,000. So it also takes a lot of work and consistency. So like it's, it is a big numbers game. So don't expect putting 10 designs on there and you're going to get $5,000. So you, you see the, the balance of, you know, 50,000 products to, to 5,000 a month. So yeah. So keep and it's, uploading. It's not keep exactly the map, but you know, it, it takes a lot to make a lot. And so, okay. I mean, that's brilliant. Fine. So I, I mean, that's, that's great advice. Literally basically just to push forward and don't give up yeah. after 50 designs. If you're only getting yeah. 10 sales a month. So I think here's, here's an analogy. I think anybody can actually play the piano with enough time and enough practice. It's the people that actually do it every day and want to, and have that desire to play piano that actually learn how to do it. Yeah. People that just like, Oh, I would love to play it and start tinkering around. And after five days, give up. They're not going to learn how to play the piano. The same For thing sure. with um, print on demand. It's going to take time and consistency. And over time you'll learn how to do it and get really great at it. Yeah. So. I mean, unless you're tone deaf. Then I don't right, any right. is gonna Some people will never be able to play, but <laughs> for, I think a lot of people can if they put their mind to it. And put yeah, I agree. I mean, I said that with anything. I think I think anyone can do anything if they yeah. put their mind to it. It's the same thing with the ten thousand hour rule, um, um, where you know you spend ten thousand hours doing something, you're master right. to master something, um, and and yeah, I mean that's pretty cool. All right, fine. I like this. This is really, really interesting. One more thing. Uh, I think really good habits help. So yeah. getting up, like my habit is getting up at five thirty in the morning, sleeping. So I have this thing and um, it helps that if you like doing what you're doing. So I, I really love, I enjoy designing t-shirts. I'm a graphic designer. I went into that trade because I love drawing and art and all of that. So that really helps. So those two yeah. things as well. 
That Good makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah, definitely enjoy what you're doing. I mean, that's the thing. If someone says to me they want to do print on demand because you know they want to start making more money, they don't really care about print on demand. I'd say yeah. don't don't do it. It's, yeah, they're give not up gonna make week. it because the first paychecks they're gonna get fifteen cents, and they're like, uh, that isn't making me a lot of money, and I'm out. Right. So yeah. So you've got to really, really, really love what you do. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for coming on this interview. Anytime. Really, yeah. really interesting. On I feel like I've earned a ton. Um, so that's so cool. And just tell everyone where, where they can follow you. Cause obviously I'll put links to your YouTube and Instagram right. down below. Um, yeah. I'm detour shirts everywhere. So detour shirts on YouTube, nice. detour shirts on Instagram. Those are probably my two biggest platforms. I do have a Facebook group as well. Detour shirts. Nice. Um, you can find me on all three and, and, and Twitter. I don't have a big Twitter following. I mean, it is big, but I don't get a lot of traction on there, but I feel like no one gets a lot of traction on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's right. sort of a different animal for me so i awesome. gotta learn one a little better awesome and i recommend everyone who who is going to go to a youtube account to actually go and i don't know if you've done this yet but to make a playlist on the you did like a step uh of creating the whole business i think it was brilliant um and i think if you have made a playlist then i made a playlist for the red bubble series that i did yeah uh, part one two three and four yeah, so I would say I recommend everyone to go check that out because if you're thinking about selling a rare bubble or you are selling a rare bubble, then that could be really beneficial. And I'm, I'm doing this month, I'm doing one for um, Merch by Amazon. So I'm doing the same kind of series, part one, two, three, four. For someone starting out on Merch by Amazon, fresh, I give all examples. Like I said, I'm showing the 10 shirts that I actually put on there and and when I'm selling them and how, how often they sell and everything. So Nice. I'm definitely going to watch that. That really yeah. interesting um yeah so that's i, re- I reckon that's what everyone everyone should go and actually thanks. watch but amazing okay well like, thanks for coming on yeah anytime anytime we'll, we'll uh, i hope probably everyone enjoyed it again. let yeah. me know in the comments yeah. down below if you want to see more of these kind of things if you want to see juno on the youtube channel a bit more i don't mind and uh <laughs> and yeah okay thanks for watching everyone